Welcome to Pastor Jim on location. And I was hoping to do an on location outside today, but the winter weather, even though it's sunshine, has forced me into the safe confines as I am sequestered in the bowels of the God's Feet Cafe here at Lakeshore Assembly of God. Another Lockdown Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well. And today we're going to be looking at a set of scriptures, and here they are, Luke 7.36. And if you'd open your Bibles at this time, uh, let's go to Luke 7.36. I'm hoping this will stay long enough so that everybody uh, gets it. And uh, it was working a little while ago. Okay, we'll leave it right there. So today I want to talk about the story. Uh, well, let me ask this question. A hussy seeks the holy. Or maybe a better question is, have you ever said to yourself, God cannot forgive me? Have you ever committed so many sins, or is there some sin that you've committed that was so grievous? Have you done damage perhaps to others or even to yourself in such a, a level uh, in your life that you believe that I cannot be forgiven? Well, this story today I think should be very exciting. Let's go to the Word of God right now, Luke 7, 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And a woman in the town who lived a sinful life, a prostitute, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster box or jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet, with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Wow. Okay. Now, as we look at those verses, we see several things right off the bat. First of all, a Pharisee has invited Jesus to his home. Now, I'm not saying that's suspicious, but as we're going to see in the story, I'm not sure the invitation was completely homogenous. I'm not sure it was benevolent. The Pharisees were constantly in contradiction with the teachings of Christ because Christ came to talk about a spiritual liberty, and most of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, not all of them exclusively, but, but as a whole, they were into the legalism uh, rather than faith. And we see here that the Pharisee uh, invites Jesus, but I just asked the question, why? In a little bit, I think we'll have that answer. The prostitute is weeping and we see that she's uh, she's brought an alabaster box now we need to understand an, an alabaster box this type of perfume minimally this was twenty five thousand dollars in today's money and trust me prostitutes did not have much much wealth uh, prostitutes did not have much wealth um, that's why they were prostitutes for so for her to bring this type of ointment, uh, and, and to perhaps dispense it, is, honestly, I believe she's, she's brought everything she's got, okay? Secondly, we see that she's uh, weeping. The, the Bible says that she's weeping, and while she is weeping, she literally is washing Christ's feet with her tears. She is weeping to the degree that the tears are flowing. And then the Bible even says that she kissed his feet. Now, I've got to be totally honest with you. In any cultural setting, this would be an uncomfortable um, situation. This would, this would look extremely uncomfortable. You've been to parties if someone were to act this way towards somebody. But we see here in this Pharisee's home that Jesus is allowing this woman uh, to, to do what she is doing. Now let's go to verse 39 because the story gets better. When the Pharisee who had, had invited him saw this, he said to himself, he didn't say it out loud, he said quietly in his mind, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Okay, now, the interesting thing is he says that to himself. He's not saying it out loud. He said nothing out loud. As this woman is doing this, in his mind, he's thinking something. Now, the Bible talks about words of knowledge. What is the word of knowledge? It many times can be something that the, that the Lord gives somebody. It's a, it's a knowledge um, 
there's times that you can have a word of knowledge. You can you can just have a sense that somebody is thinking something or worried about something or something is on their mind. You'll call them up and say, man, I was praying for you this morning. And the Lord laid on me that you, you're really troubled about something. And, and I go, wow, how did you know that? Well, the Holy Spirit communicates that. Jesus knows all things. So he knows what this guy's even thinking. But he doesn't know that Jesus knows what he's thinking. In verse 41, verse 40 rather, Jesus answered him and said, and the, the Pharisee's name was Simon. Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Now it's interesting. Well, let's look at the story first. So he says to Simon, he says, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. Okay, it's like today if somebody owed $500 and somebody owed 50,000. Okay, so he forgave the debts of both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? It's a simple question. I mean, if I owed you 50,000 bucks and you called me up and said, hey, Pastor Jim, I owe, you owe me 50 grand here and I'm forgiving you. Man, I would really be excited about that because you're not going to sue me and go after my house and my Mustang and pictures of my dogs and stuff. You're not... You're going to leak. I'm going to be able to keep everything because you have forgiven me. Now, if, if it was $50 and you forgave me, I, I would be appreciative, but $50 is just, it's not much of a setback, but $50,000 is. So obviously, the person who has forgiven a lot is going to be far more excited and appreciative of that forgiveness. Hmm. So Simon replies to Jesus. Well, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. And he answered correctly, but i got to be honest, that's a trick question because who in their right mind would not come to that conclusion. And that's the beauty about Jesus and many of his teachings is he says something that is common sense. Sometimes we think we need some supernatural revelation for certain levels of truth. And i got to be honest, you can be... You can be not real sharp, and yet you would answer this question correctly. And often you'll see that Jesus asks things of people that are common sense. That the, 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 the conclusion uh, or the answer to the question is a, an extremely easy one. It's one that everybody understands. But understand that, that when the Lord is using parables, he's using stories, he's using questions, he's trying to get us to see something at a higher level using the apparatus of everyday life. In this case, he's using the apparatus of two people who owe money, different amounts of money, but now he's going to shift to something far greater, okay? First of all, and uh, the guy with, uh, so if someone with lots of sins comes to Jesus, because Ultimately, this is what Jesus is going to do. He's going to shift it from money to sin. And the question is, there's two questions that have to be answered. Can Jesus forgive it all? If you come to Christ with whatever you've done, whatever you've thought, all the, the sins of, of a lifetime. I mean, if you were to get a calculator out, do you have fresh batteries? If you were to honestly, from the moment you were born, till the moment I'm speaking with you. If you were to take every sin that you've ever imagined, every sin you've ever committed, every sin of omission, because sometimes we only think about the commission sin, but there's a million things in life we should do, and we don't. And believe it or not, don't be mad at me, but those are sins too. And Christ, in other words, can Jesus forgive all your sin? And two, can you believe and trust that he can. Because there are people who Christ is happy to forgive them of all their sins, but they are so in condemnation, they're so in guilt, they're so bogged down by what everybody else has condemned them and, and, and said terrible things to them, believes terrible things about them, and they find it virtually impossible to believe that if everybody in the world, and even my own conscience, hates myself, how can there be such a God that would love me through all that. Hmm. So let's go to verse 44 to 47. Then he turned towards the woman and he said to Simon, so he looked at the woman, which is kind of cool. 
because he looked at the woman. The woman was down here by his feet. And then he looked back at Simon, and here's what he said. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins, and they're many, but they all forgiven. Oh, praise God. As her great love has shown, but whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Now, let's talk about this. Now we find out that Christ, when he entered the Pharisee's house, was not given even the common courtesies given to other guests. It was standard protocol, especially if this Pharisee, and often the Pharisees had some wealth, they, they would be similar in our culture, I think, to congressmen. So they typically had more wealth. They, they had good standing. And if Jesus had walked miles and his feet and his lower legs were filthy, it was standard protocol for people when they came into a home to have their feet washed first. Often there would be servants that would be waiting there to wash those feet. How do we know? Because Jesus, when he washed the apostles' feet, the, the, remember, Peter was offended that Jesus would go to the, this point of a servant to wash the feet. So this is a common practice and protocol that has been neglected Christ. In other words, I don't believe the Pharisee wanted Jesus to come over so that he could hear the truth. I think he came over to trap him, and he thought he had him trapped. And what's interesting, when the Pharisee, uh, when Jesus turns to the woman and then turns back to Simon the Pharisee, it's interesting because Jesus addresses what was on his mind. He didn't say what he was thinking, but Christ knew what he was thinking and addressed it. So that Pharisee was able to experience then the idea that Christ really knows all things. He even knew what he was thinking. He knew what was in his heart. And I find that interesting. Secondly, not only no uh, water to clean feet, but it was, it was a common practice when you entered into something that people would, in many cultures, even today, uh, and now with the COVID-19, I guess that's out for a while, but, but there would be a holy kiss. It was not an unusual thing for people to embrace each other and kiss each other and, on the cheeks and, 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 and hug each other. Jesus was not given that as well. And the third thing was no oil on the head. And we need to understand that in arid uh, uh, parts of the world, especially in the time of Christ, when people, especially if they journeyed far, remember they are in, in fairly nomadic and, and arid conditions, and the sun is beating down constantly, and by the time they got to someone's home, uh, their, their face and their head had experienced often great windburn, if not sunburn. And it was, believe it or not, a common practice to take some simple oils and simply wipe it on the forehead and sometimes on the back of the neck and, and well to replenish uh, simply some of, of the skin tone. So Christ has been forbidden all of this, but this woman who everyone hates, who everyone thinks is the biggest sinner in town, she has come and shown the greatest love to Jesus. Wow. So then we have to ask ourselves, how much do we love Jesus? How much do we love the Lord? I guess the bottom line, when Jesus said, and I, I don't like this, what he said. He said, whoever has been forgiven little loves little. And do we really believe that we have been forgiven of little? And I think that's the question. For those of you that are coming to Christ, or you're just about to come to Christ, or you just came to Christ, um, there's some of you who um, I believe that you think there's always people around us that are a lot worse than us. But those of you that have been around in the Lord for a while, that are deep in, in the Lord, you've been serving Christ for many years, um, I am shocked that I am saved. I, I can't believe um, how much sin that I believe still to some degree exists in, 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 in my life in the sense that I am, I am now completely aware that keeping the Ten Commandments perfectly from the moment I get up to the moment I go to bed, it is unbelievable how hard that is. 
Now, you may not be killing anybody today, and there's one or two other commandments, but trust me, the other seven, somewhere in there, we are constantly then in some level of sin. And if not in what we're doing, it's what we're thinking. It's our attitudes. It's our prejudices. What I'm saying is Christ is continually forgiving you and I of our sins. So my prayer is that today that if Christ was able to forgive this woman of so much, trust me, he is able to forgive you and I of so much as well. So I hope this is a blessing today, and I'm going to close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this day that you've given us. And Lord, for anyone that's watching, if they have been held back from coming to Christ because they say, that I've just done too much, Pastor Jim, you don't know how bad I really am. I don't have to know how bad you really are. I know that Christ is able to forgive the most unforgivable people on the planet, and the evidence is every true member of the body of Christ. Because nobody is better than anybody else. All of us come from the same stock of sin, but we are all now allowed to be forgiven and to be set free by that grace and mercy, Christ, that you showed us at the cross of Calvary, and that you proved your divinity when you rose from the dead. So, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Live in me and help me the rest of my life. Clean up my act, in, in essence. Even though I know that that my, my faith is completely based on your righteousness. Help me to become, Lord, what you would have me to be the rest of my life. Well, I hope that this teaching today has been a blessing. And as usual, uh, we'll be uploading this teaching also to www.lakeshoreassemblyofgod.com as well. And I want you this Friday uh, at noon, uh, Ralph War. Uh, is going to be doing an, an amazing teaching. Uh, so be sure to tune in this Friday uh, at, on both the Facebook page here as well as LakeshoreAssemblyOfGod.com. And go to LakeshoreAssemblyOfGod.com. We've got about probably 100 different uh, services. We've got church services, Bible studies, Pastor Jim and locations, a lot of great programming there. So God bless. Serve the Lord. Love them with all your heart. And God bless you today.